The paintings for the temple um, are the most important works by Hilma Klint. At least that's how she saw it, it's very clear. It's actually the work. Everything else are studies and sketches and trying to understand what she's done. So there are 193 paintings and some of them are exceedingly large. It's kind of strange to think that this relatively small woman, we know that she was uh, 159, <laughs> uh, produced these enormous paintings that actually are not similar to anything I'm, uh, I know from that period. It's difficult to understand how these paintings came about. It's almost uh, um, as if she had a kind of a divine inspiration. She believed that she physically painted them, but that she was actually a kind of instrument for higher forces. Maybe one could say that she's an abstractionist, uh, but it's not that geometrical static world of uh, mathematics or platonic forms. It's more some sort of a life uh, force. There are spirals and, and cycles and there are Fibonacci series and, and you know all the kinds of uh, mathematical and other shapes that we recognize from nature. So the temple, what did she mean with the temple? We don't really know. I mean, there, there seems to be an inner temple, her inner temple, some inner world. There seems to be a higher sphere that, you know, that she refers to as the temple. But sometimes in her sketchbooks, she also makes drawings of physical temples. I mean, there is an architectural fantasy here. And, uh, you know, one could dream of building this temple, maybe. Hilma of Klint was an unbelievably strong individual. She created these works, they were hardly shown during her lifetime. So there's a kind of a moment of you know, final justice when this unbelievable work reaches a large audience. The incredible thing with Hilma Klint ultimately is that she's a fantastic artist. She creates her own vibrant visual cosmos and it's maybe not you know, possible to translate into language. That's why it's great art.